Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this next video, we have a fairly tricky quadratic word problem to go through. So there's gonna be lots of algebra in this one, lots of unique algebra. So a ball is thrown from a 27 meter high roof and travels a horizontal distance of 27 meters before hitting the ground. If the ball reaches a max height of 36 meters, find the horizontal distances when it reaches a height of 30 meters. So we've definitely done questions like this. Let me actually put the diagram here. So we've definitely done questions like this before where we're taking a ball, we're throwing it off the roof, but um, just the algebra of things we have to solve for is going to be a little unique in this one. So we're throwing it off a roof that has a height of 27 meters. So that's going to be over here, right? So this is going to be zero and 27 like that. Right, this height is 27 meters at a horizontal distance of zero meters. So that's where we're starting. Then we throw the ball off the roof, it reaches a max height, and then it hits the ground right there. So notice that we're told that it travels a horizontal distance of 27 meters before hitting the ground. So over here, when it hits the ground, what's the height of it going to be? Well, it's going to be zero and it traveled a horizontal distance of 27 meters, right? So this here would be 27. So that means this X value, which represents the horizontal distance is going to be 27. And then we're told the ball reaches a max height of 36 meters. So over here, this vertex, this max value, we don't know what the X value is, but we do know that the H value of that vertex is going to be 36, right? It's going to have a height of 36 meters like that. And what they're asking for is we have to find the horizontal distances when it reaches a height of 30 meters. So notice 30 meters is going to be in between this height of 27 meters and this height, that max height of 36 meters. So let's say that's like here. And so notice it's going to reach that height at two points right there and then right there. And what they're asking for what are those horizontal distances going to be? What's that X1 and X2 going to be right there? That's what they're asking for. Okay, so initially what we got to get, the first step is we actually have to get an equation for this, right? We have to get an equation for this quadratic right here. And then once we have the equation, right, we'll, we'll have H in terms of X, we could plug in that h value of 30 into the equation and then solve for x and hopefully it's going to give us those two x values but the tricky part is is getting the equation and there's different ways to do it now because we're given some information about the vertex we're not given the x value of the vertex but we are given the h value of the vertex i feel like um using vertex form uh, is going to be best to come up with the equation. And so vertex form, remember it's x minus, now because we're using a height here, usually we do x minus h squared plus k. I'm going to use a different variable here for, uh, let me think here. Yeah, I'll just put m over here, that's gonna be squared plus K. Okay, so the vertex of this quadratic in general is M and K. Usually this is an H value, right? But because we are using an H value here for the height, I don't want you thinking that that H value and this H value are gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna put another variable here. I'm gonna use M to represent the x value of the vertex, which we don't have. So this here is gonna be an m value like that. And so from here now, what we can do is we could plug some stuff in. So notice that the 36, which is the k value, we could plug that in, but notice that really that's all we could plug in for now. We don't know what this m value is here, right? We don't know the x value or the axis of symmetry. We're not given that. And then we don't know what this a value is either. Those are the two uh, constants we're gonna have to solve for. But we are given some points here. We are given this point of zero and 27, and we're given this point of 27 and zero. So what we can do 
is we could plug both of those in. So let's start off with 0 and 27. So we'd plug in 0 for x and then 27 for a. And so when we do that, we'd have 27 equals a uh, 0 minus m squared plus 36. And so we'd end up with 27 equals a negative m squared plus 36. And then we'd end up with a m squared. And then the 36 I'm actually going to bring over. So 27 minus 36, just to simplify those like terms, that would give us negative 9. So notice we end up with this equation right here. And then I'm going to plug in that other point of 27 and 0. So now the x value is going to be 27, then the h value is going to be 0. So we'll have 0 equals a 27 minus m squared plus 36 like that. Okay, and so from here, uh, let me think. You know what? I will leave it like this for now. I'll bring the, yeah, see, this is where it gets a little complex of how we're gonna solve this. Yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring the negative 30, or I'll bring the 36 over, so we'll have negative 36 like that. And then I'm not gonna expand this. Eventually, I think we're gonna have to expand it, but I'll leave it like this. So now notice we have two equations like that, and two unknowns to solve for the a and the m, the a and the m. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is going to be fairly unique algebra over here, right? The reason why it's unique is because we're not given that axis of symmetry or that x value of the, um, of the vertex. Usually we're given that like it reaches a max height at a vertical distance or at a horizontal distance of something. And then we have that coordinate. So then when we plug it in to that vertex form, we have an H, we have a K, and then we only need one other point to solve for that corresponding A value. Okay, but the problem is we're not given that H value. We don't, we're only given the K value. And so it's going to require more algebra because now we have two things to solve for, the A value and then this H value. This H value, remember, I made it be uh, the M value. Okay, so we have an A value and the M value to solve for. We're not given that axis of symmetry. And so that's why this is a bit of a more complex um, function. To, uh, to deal with. So from here, what I would do is I'm going to isolate for this a value. Here. So I'll divide both sides by m squared. So I'll have negative 9 over m squared. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in for this a value. So we'd have negative 36 equals negative 9 over m squared, 27 minus m squared. And then I'm going to expand that, right? So we'll have 27 minus m times 27 minus m. And so what would happen is we, um, so watch this, we'll have negative nine over m squared. 27 times 27 will give us 729. And then we'll have negative 27 m minus 27 m, which would give us negative 54 m. Then we'll have plus m squared like that and then we'll have the negative 36 on the outside. And so from there, what I would do is uh, I'm actually gonna divide both sides. We could distribute this negative nine inside the bracket along with this m squared. I'm actually gonna divide both sides by negative nine to get rid of these because I noticed that negative 36 divided by negative nine gives us a positive four. So we end up with one over m squared times all of this stuff in the bracket like that. Uh, just give me a sec, I wanna make sure I'm not screwing anything up here. Yeah, it looks fine to me. And then actually these two brackets I'm gonna make as one. So this is like over one. So we could just multiply the numerators and the denominators. So then this, this whole thing would be over m squared. The four is gonna be over one. And then we can cross multiply. So when we do that, when we cross multiply from here, four times m squared would give us four m squared. And then we'll have one times this bracket, which would be just that bracket 
as is, like that. Okay, I told you that this, uh, I warned you that this algebra is going to be fairly complex. By the way, there's multiple ways to go about this. Those two equations that we had, I erased the other one. But whichever way you want to go about it to solve for the a and the m value, just make sure that you're going to get the same values that I'm going to get. Okay, and so from here we have an equation now just in terms of m. I'm going to bring everything over to the left side because we'll have a positive leading coefficient. So 4m squared minus m squared. 3m squared plus 54m uh, minus 729 is equal to 0. And so we end up with a quadratic equation here. You can take this, you could throw it in the quadratic formula if you like. We're dealing with fairly large numbers, so that's not the worst thing to do. Uh, this, I think, is going to factor smoothly as well. So we could take out a 3 from everything. And then 729 divided by 3 would give us 243. And then two numbers that multiply to negative 243 and then add up to 18 are going to be um, 27 and negative 9. Okay, 27 times negative 9 gives us 243, 27 plus negative 9, which is like 27 minus 9 gives us 18. And so this here would factor into m plus 27, m minus 9, and then that's going to equal 0. So notice that the two solutions would be m plus 27 uh, is equal to 0, sorry, m minus 9 is equal to 0. So this is going to be negative 27, and then this here is going to be positive 9. Now, notice the negative 27. We can ignore that because it doesn't make sense for m to be negative according to this word problem over here, right? This m has to be positive, right? Because we reach this max height at a positive horizontal distance right here, okay? And that horizontal distance is going to be between 0 and 27, so this 9 here makes sense. And so that's the m value. It's just 9. Let me write that down. So this here, the vertex is 9 and 36. We finally got the full vertex, right? The axis of symmetry is 9, and the horizontal distance when the ball reaches a max height of 36 is 9 meters. So we have the m value, and then we could solve for the a value here. So we plug in 9 for m, negative 9 over 81, which would give us negative 1 over 9, like that. Okay, so what was the original equation? I actually erased this, so it was h equals a x minus m squared plus the k value, which we said was 36, or which we were given to be 36, right, the h value, the vertex. <clears throat> and then the a value is negative 1 over 9, and then the m value is positive 9, like that. And so finally, we're not even done yet, but finally we got an equation for this quadratic. If you take this equation and you graph it in Desmos, you would see it has an intercept of 0 and 27. It's going to have a maximum point at 9 and 36. And then it's going to hit the ground or it's going to have an x-intercept of 27 and Zero. And then you could also test these. So you could plug in like 0 for x, see if you get an h value 27. You could plug in an x value 27 here, see if you get an h value 0. You could plug in an x value 9, which would make this whole thing 0, which would leave you with that 36. All right, so that's the equation. And now finally, we can find these two x values, which are the two horizontal distance when the ball is going to be at a height of 30. So we'll plug in 30 for h, we'll have negative 1 over 9, x minus 9 squared plus 36, bring the 36 over, negative 6, negative 1 over 9, x minus 9 squared. There's actually two different ways to, that's another thing I want to mention, two different ways to solve it. You could bring this over, you could expand everything, and then throw it in the quadratic formula, or maybe try to factor it. I'm gonna just solve for this x value directly. So I'm gonna bring this over. 
Uh, so we get negative 6, then divide both sides by negative 1 over 9. Um, which here would give us, what, 54? Right, because negative 6 divided by negative 1 over 9 is like negative 6 times negative 9 over 1, which would give us 54, like that. And so those cancel out. So we end up with 54 equaling x minus 9 squared. And then to get rid of this exponent here, we can just square root both sides. And so the square root of 54 is going to be plus or minus 7.35. And so that's where two solutions, we're going to have either uh, positive 7.35 can be x minus 9, bring the negative 9 over, so we'll have an x value of 16.35, like that. Or we'll have negative 7.35 plus 9 gives us x when we bring the negative 9 over. And this here would give us 1.65. Two positive values, and that makes sense because this here is going to be 1.65 and then this here is going to be 16.35. And notice that both of them are less than 27, so it makes sense according to the diagram as well. So those are the two solutions. Those are the two horizontal distances, 1.65, 16.35, when the ball reaches a height of 30. And again, you could take this, you could graph it on a graphing calculator or decimals or whatever, and then see the height of 30 is going to be reached at those points as well. You could check it on the graph. And then as I mentioned here, you could have also solved this by bringing everything over to one side, expanding it, and then you wouldn't be able to factor because we're getting these decimal values. You'd have to throw it in the quadratic formula, but I think you're gonna be working with lots of fractions and stuff. So I don't recommend going that route, so I just directly solve for the, uh, for the x value. But again, at this point, different ways to solve for this x value. Whichever way you want to go about it, just make sure you're getting those two values. Right, so fairly intense question in my opinion. Lots going on here, but 1.65 meters, 16.35 meters, those are the solutions.